What's up, family? It's Cousin Five, back with another video. And as y'all can tell from the title, once again, I'm touring another bookstore. Y'all know this is what we do now. This is kind of like our regular thing. This is our family thing, you know what I'm saying? So today, I'm going to a bookstore here in Metro Atlanta again, and I'm going to a bookstore called Poseman Books. If you know anything about Atlanta, it's in Pond City Market. So we're going down here, we're gonna go to Pond City, and we're gonna tour this bookstore. And y'all know that y'all coming with me, so don't even worry about it. But also, I got some special guests that are very special to me coming along with me. So I got my girlfriend coming with me, I got my brother who's coming from North Carolina, his wife, and we about to go have a good time in this bookstore because my brother is trying to get into reading, as I've told y'all in the previous video, and his wife is a very avid reader. So, a group of bookies getting together to go to a bookstore, I don't think you can beat that. You know what I'm saying? Before we go to the bookstore, I've been peeping that my eyes been bothering me when I'm reading. And it's been so long since I got an eye exam and some new glasses. So, I booked myself an appointment to get an eye exam and hopefully get some new frames too. I went to Warby Parker for both. I'm taking y'all along with me to go get this eye exam, go get some new frames, and then we gonna slide out to the bookstore. So let's go get this eye exam. so mad that it was raining but look how aesthetic this just looks from the outside like i can't even lie to you the rain is a little bit of a bummer but just look at this store y'all that's poseman books for y'all this shit look fire let's get inside here and see what we got going on to the camera.
cuz we back in the crib. But can you tell me what's a little different about me right now? You can't. I got my new frames. They took a little bit to come in. You feel me? But I'm rocking with them though. Shout out to Warby Parker for the frames and the glasses. That bookstore was amazing. Like way better than I thought it was about to be. And way better than the pictures that I saw. Like the pictures was fire. But just being in that store was different. And that was fun. Too much fun, actually, because I bought way too many books. Can you really have too many books? I don't think so. But I spent a lot more money than I thought I was about to spend. So now we got to go over them because I got to show y'all the bad choices that I made. But they're really good choices, if you know what I mean. Because it ain't no bad choices when you're picking books. All right, y'all. So the first book we got is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I have been wanting to get this book for a very long time. And I actually seen this book for the first time on Jack Edwards' page or Jack in the Books because he has two pages. But he said that this book made him cry. This book is essentially about a young man named Dorian Gray who puts beauty and youth above everything else. So he makes a deal with the devil and he is beautiful and young for the rest of his life for eternally. But when while he was young, he got a portrait of himself painted and the portrait now takes on all of his sins and it ages as he's supposed to age. So as he's doing these crazy things in life because he's young, he's beautiful, he feels like he can do whatever he wants to do, but his portrait is now becoming ugly and evil and it's eating him up a lot because it's basically a curse. So now every day when he sees this portrait, he sees bad things that he's doing, the way that he's aging and how he would have looked if he wouldn't have did you know, what he did. So I'm super excited to read this book. It's very, very interesting and I can't wait to read it. So this is, this is gonna be on the top of my list for sure. The next book we got is Normal People by Sally Rooney. Now, a lot of people have recommended me this book, and what I didn't notice at first is that this has a Hulu original series tag on it. So, y'all let me know, like, what series? Is it called Normal People on Hulu? Because I want to watch it, and I will watch it. So, y'all let me know. But this book is essentially about two people named Connell and Marianne, and they live in a small town. That's literally the only thing they have in common. Because <laughs> Connell is popular in school and Marianne is the biggest loner ever. When these two so happened to have a conversation, it was very awkward, but it was electrifying. So this book is pretty much going over from that first conversation to the years to come, you know what I'm saying, as they build their relationship from that one conversation. So I think this is going to be a good book. Seems like a really good story and a good plot. Let's get into it. I'm telling y'all, this next book, I've been waiting for so long to get. Y'all been recommending it to me. I've been seeing it everywhere. And I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, this is going to be the next book that I read because I'm so excited. I can't hide it. A Love Song for Ricky Wilde by T. Williams. I've been waiting for this. All right, cousins, I'm not even going to try and summarize this up for y'all. We got to read the synopsis on this one. So let's get into it. Ricky Wilde has many talents, but being a Wilde isn't one of them. As the impulsive, artistic daughter of a powerful Atlanta dynasty, she's the opposite of her famous socialite sisters. Where they're long stemmed roses, she's a dandelion, an adorable bloom that's actually a weed, born to float wherever the wind blows. In her bones, Ricky knows that somewhere a different, more exciting a life waits for her. When a non agenarian I think that's the word, Miss Della invites to her to rent the bottom floor of her Harlem brownstone. Ricky jumps at the chance for a fresh beginning. She leaves behind her family, wealth, and chaotic romantic decisions to realize her dream of opening a flower shop in New York City. And just beneath the surface of her new neighborhood, the music, the stores, and dazzling drama of the Harlem Renaissance still simmers. One evening in February, as the heady, curiously off-season scent of night-blooming jasmine fills the air, Ricky encounters a handsome, 
deeply mysterious stranger who knocks her world off balance in the most unexpected way. Set against the backdrop of contemporary Harlem and 1920s decadence, a love song for Ricky Wilde is a modern day fairy tale of two passionate artists drawn to the magic and romance of New York and whose lives are irreversibly linked. Oh my motherfucking God. This book, Tia, we gonna have to talk. I'm not gonna lie. Because that just got me excited like I just read the book. Yeah, Tia, you keep keep doing what you're doing because you're making us happy out here. You really feel in my heart. I feel like I'm about to cry right now. <laughs> no, this is on the top of my list though. I might just read this next. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Then my girl bought normal people too. So we already talked about that, but I'm gonna set that up there for her. Let's get it. The next book we got is Animal Farm by George Orwell. Another George Orwell book because I'm telling y'all 1984 was a really good book. Now I picked this up and when I read it, I was instantly intrigued because this book is about a farm that is taken over by its overworked and mistreated animals. Now, they take this over and they try and get equality and build, you know, freedom for everybody and everything. But as we all know, that can only last for so long. Some people going to want to be in charge. Some people going to want to sit back. So then after a while, this turns into like a totalitarian style farm with these animals. So now the animals have built their own hierarchy. When it first came out, they said that this was seen to be going against or like the target of this book was like Stalinist Russia. I'm not going to lie. It says as time goes on, it becomes very clear that wherever freedom is attacked, whenever and wherever a hierarchy begins to form, this book is relevant to whatever time. So I'm excited to read it. It's super short. So this should be a quick read, easy read. We're going to get into this one. Bet it up. So the next book we got is The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. Now, I didn't see this book a lot, but I've seen it probably about three or four times in my comments over a few videos. And the title of this book is really what caught me, The Nickel Boys. Like, that just sounds sweet as hell. I'm not going to lie. From reading the synopsis on this book, this is basically about a boy named Elwood, a black boy named Elwood who's growing up in the 1960s in Tallahassee, who is unfairly sentenced to a juvenile reformatory school called the Nickel Academy. Now, when he's in this academy or whatever, he builds a friendship with this other boy named Turner, who is a delinquent, you know what I'm saying? And he feels that the only way to live in this world is to scheme and do whatever you need to do to avoid trouble. So these are two boys who have two totally different ways of thinking, I'm assuming. And as their friendship builds on and they continue to do what they do in this academy, they start to butt heads a little bit. Their like ideologies and the way that they look at the world are really starting to butt heads so much that it just leads to a decision that they say will echo down the decades. So I'm real curious to read this book because it is based on a true story for a reform school that was operated for 111 years. Um, and it says that warped the lives of thousands of children. I'm super excited to read this, especially because it's based on a true story or based on an actual reform school. This one might get something up out of me. Like it might make me cry a little bit because I'm gonna see myself in, in one of these boys, I guarantee it. So let's get into it. So y'all know I love romance, and this next book is something that was super duper recommended to me, and I'm glad y'all recommended it because I already know that Talia Hibbert gets down when she put that pen to paper. Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Y'all recommended it. I went and picked it up. Now it says, Chloe Brown is a chronically ill computer geek with a goal, a plan, and a list. After almost, but not quite, dying, she comes up with seven directives to help her get a life. And she's already completed the first, finally moving out of her glamorous family's mansion. The next items, enjoy a drunken night out, ride a motorcycle, go camping, have a meaningless but thoroughly enjoyable sex, travel the world with nothing but hand luggage, and do something bad. 
but it's not as easy as being bad, even when you've written step-by-step -step guidelines on how to do it correctly. What Chloe needs is a teacher, and she knows just the man for the job. Redford Red Morgan is a handyman with tattoos, a motorcycle, and more sex appeal, and 10,000 Hollywood heartthrobs. He's also an artist who paints at night and hides his work in the light of day, which Chloe knows because she spies on him occasionally, just the teeniest, tiniest bit. But when she enlists Red in her mission to rebel, she learned things about him that no spy session could teach her, like why he clearly resents Chloe's wealthy background and why he never shows his art to anyone and what really lies beneath his rough exterior. Yeah, this, I can already tell this is going to be a good one. Like, y'all know when y'all pick up a book and you just know instantly, like from the feel of it, from the, no, I'm just playing, <laughs> but I already knew this, I already know this is going to be a good book and I can't wait to read it. Okay, so now I had to switch it up a little bit and I got me a thriller science fiction book and that is Recursion by Blake Crouch. Now, I seen somebody recommend this book in the comments and it's funny because I was going to get another Blake Crouch book, but I didn't get it. I can't remember the name, but I didn't get it. So when I seen somebody recommend it, I had to get it. And first off, just let's get, get into this cover, man. That cover is it's crazy. It's simple, but it's crazy. You know, so basically this book is about a disease or an epidemic that is spreading through everybody and it's giving them memories of a life that they never lived. It's a detective in New York City named Barry Sutton who is like getting super close to figuring out what is going on. Nobody knows how it's traveling. Nobody knows what's happening. So he's getting super close to figuring out how to fix everything that's going on. But a scientist in a whole nother city has the keys and the tools to actually do it, to actually fix everything that's going on, but she doesn't know it. So I guess they come together and they're working together to fight and attack whatever is taking over the world, whatever is this epidemic is. So they're going through and really trying to figure out what's going on before it just takes over everything and they get into this loop of chaos. So this seems like something that I really want to read. So I'm excited. I kind of, like I said, I kind of like thrillers, man. <clears throat> Ooh, thrillers killing me. I'm getting into my thriller bag and uh, thriller. No. <laughs> I'm going to start reading more thrillers for sure because I'm kinda, I really like it. I'm not going to lie. Okay, so this next book is something that has been widely recommended, not only in the comments, but I've just seen this book everywhere. And that is Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. Now, I wasn't super inclined to grab this book, but when I read the back, I had to grab it. I've heard a lot, a lot, a lot of mixed reviews on this book. When I read it, I'm gonna give y'all my honest review and see what side of the fence that I'ma land on. But before that, it says, Dana, a 20th century black woman is celebrating her 26th birthday with her new husband when she is snatched from her home in California and transported to the antebellum South. Rufus, the white son of a plantation owner is drowning and Dana has been summoned to save him. Repeatedly drawn back through time with each stay growing longer and more perilous, Dana is forced to contend with the brutal legacy of slavery and white supremacy and not knowing if her life will end long before it has a chance to begin. That's crazy. Now, this is some science fiction and African-American literature. Like I said, I wasn't too inclined to pick up this book, but after reading that, and I know after y'all just heard that, this is a book that if you're into stuff like this, that you probably want to read. I just think it's crazy because as a black man and just as a black person in general, it's kind of always hard to comprehend slavery and how recent it actually is. But we're so far removed from it and where we are now, especially being uh, I'm a Gen Zer. All this technology and everything we got, uh, you can always look back, but you'll never know how it feels to experience that or you know what our ancestors went through. So getting snatched back into that time and having to deal with that, I couldn't even imagine it. This is something that, even if I don't like it, I think it's an important book to read. I'm very, very interested to read it. I wouldn't say excited, but I'm very interested to read it. We gonna get into it.
All right, cousins, I know I'm taking all day. I know. Just stick with me. We only got two books left. Just stick with me. I promise y'all I'm going to get y'all out of here in a timely manner. All right, fam, this next book, y'all know I love me some black love. I love two black leads in a book. I just love anything black. That's just who I am, and I'm not ashamed to say it. You know what I'm saying? So we got Honey and Spice by Baloo Babalola. If I'm butchering that name, y'all let me know. I'm sorry. When I seen this, picked it up instantly. Not going to lie to you. This book says, sharp-tongued Kiki Banjo has just made a huge mistake. As an expert in relationship evasion and the host of the popular student radio show, Brown Sugar, she's made it her mission to ensure the women of the African Caribbean Society at Whitewell College in Southern England do not fall into the mess of situationships, players, and heartbreak. But when the queen of the unbothered kisses Malachi, the guy she just publicly denounced as the waste man of Whitewell in front of every black Wellian on campus, she finds her show on the brink. They're soon embroiled in a fake relationship to try and salvage their reputations and save their futures. Kiki has surrendered her heart before, has never surrendered her heart before, and the player like Malachi won't be the one to change that no matter how charming he is or how electric their connection feels. But surprisingly entertaining study sessions and intimate late night talks at old fashioned diners force Kiki to look behind her own presumptions. Is she ready to open herself up to something deeper? I'm about to get aggressive with y'all because this is going to be a good book. I'm sorry, let me calm down. <laughs> I'm just excited. And I just can't hide. Nah, this is going to be a good one. And what's crazy about this book, I love the fact that she is really denouncing like players, situationships, and, you know, trying to stop these black women from getting into all this heartbreak. And that's who she is. But then she finds one of the biggest players, I'm assuming, she actually like falls in love with him, which is kind of crazy. So I'm super excited to read this one. Okay, y'all, this is the last book. I know this is what y'all been waiting for. Y'all ready for it? Let's just get right into it. The last book we got is Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. Now, this is a book that I truly have been wanting for a very, very long time. I just never ordered it and I haven't found it in stores. When I seen this book, I'm telling y'all, I was super duper, uber, luber, whatever you want to say, excited. I've been wanting this book for a very long time. This book is about 16 year old and not so openly gay Simon Spear, who prefers to save his drama for the school musical. But when an email falls into the wrong hands, his secret is at risk of being thrust into the spotlight. Now, Simon is actually being blackmailed. If he doesn't play wingman for the class clown Martin, his sexual identity will become everyone's business. Worse, the privacy of Blue, the pen name of the boy he's been emailing with, will be jeopardized too. As, he even, as the email correspondence with Blue grows more flirtatious every day, Simon's junior year has suddenly gotten all kinds of complicated. Simon has to find a way to step out of his comfort zone before he's pushed out. Without alienating his friends, compromising himself, or fumbling a shot of happiness with the most confusing, adorable guy he's never met. I really wanted this book just because I love reading and hearing about the perspective of other people. I'm a heterosexual black male. I'm very interested in books like this and the thought process and, you know, just reading about other people's lives you know so this is something that i thought was going to be really good like i said i'm excited to read this book it's going to get read pretty fast i can guarantee you that <laughs> all right y'all so that's it for the poseman books book haul but i got one more thing that i really want to show y'all that i seen and i instantly had to grab i got this little pen that says black creative now this is going on one of my fittings or a hoodie or a backpack or something and i'm gonna wear that thing everywhere Guaranteed. I'm glad that y'all stayed, watched the video. I hope y'all like some of the books that I got. I hope y'all like the bookstore. And if y'all got some bookstores that y'all want to recommend, put them in the comments. And whenever I'm traveling, if I can get there, if I can go there, I'm going to be there. <laughs> Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. And I promise I'm going to be coming with more videos for y'all. So stay tuned, fam, cousins, everybody. Cousin 5, out.